ADQ is the premier tool for creating ADR cues with Pro Tools. It can load PDF shooting scripts to simplify the creation of cues and allows for the text of the lines to be styled. Once queuing is complete, ADQ can export a variety of files, including PDFs using customizable layouts. You can design the complete look and formatting of the text, select what fields appear on each queue, and set up how queue numbers should count and what data they contain. To assist with updating queues from a writer, EDIQ can now generate the to be written PDFs with editable fields. This allows writers to enter the updated lines directly into the PDF, and this PDF can then be loaded back into EDIQ to update the master queue session. Want to know more about how EDIQ works? Then keep watching this video for a demonstration on how to load queue data into EDIQ. Hi, I'm Mark from Sounds in Sync, the developer of EDIQ. In this video, I'm going to show you the various file types that EDIQ can load and how you go about importing the queue data from them. Once you have seen the file type loaded that you are using, you can skip ahead to the next video to see how to configure the EDIQ settings and export your files. Also, once you have loaded your data into EDIQ, you can check everything has been loaded correctly by displaying the queues using the details button next to the queue count. So these are the files that EDIQ can load. Here are a set of text files that have been exported from Pro Tools. The first contains timecodes, and the second one here contains footages. Next, here is a PDF that has been exported from EDIQ, and I'll show you how to import the embedded data contained within that file. Here we've got a to be written PDF that has been exported from EDIQ, and this contains editable fields, and I'll show you how to load this edited or updated text contained within the PDF. Next, we've got a set of PDFs where each PDF contains the cues for each reel, and I'll show you how to combine the data from all of those files. Next, we have a Excel file, and I'll show you how to import the ADRQ data from that. You have the same data in a tab delimited text file. I'll show you the difference between those. I also have a tab delimited text file here with just a few fields. And then to finish up, I'll show you how to import the ADR cues from this Media Composer marker file and from this ADR Studio XML file. Now to load these files, we can just simply drag and drop them onto the main window, or we can use the file menu. You can use the load PT session menu item here to load Pro Tools text files or the import data menu options here to load the various other files. Or you can use the load session toolbar button here or the import data toolbar menu here. But in this demonstration, I'm just gonna drop the files directly onto the main window. So here's the Pro Tools session as text file that was exported from Pro Tools containing time codes. Just gonna drag and drop that onto the main window. The first thing we set here is the text encoding. Now this needs to match the text encoding that was used while exporting the text file from Pro Tools. So if you used the default text edit setting, you can just leave this set up as system settings. If you use the UTF-8 export setting, you need to select UTF-8 here. If you need more information on how to set this text encoding option here, please see the user guide. It's got the full background on how text encodings work and how you would transfer files between, say, Mac and Windows, and vice versa. Next, we select a default priority, if any queues don't have a priority set. Um, we set up here which tracks we're going to load the queue data from. By default, we just import the data from tracks that contain ADRQ or department note tags in the track names. We can load muted clips here, and if we are importing custom queue numbers from the clip names in the Pro Tools session, and EDIQ isn't seeing a custom queue number in every clip when you expect it to be there, uh, you can check this option here to export a log of the clips that don't contain a custom queue number so you can fix that. Lastly here we select if we're going to import the ADR queue tracks or the department note tracks. Um, if you only contain ADR queue tracks in the session, only this option will be enabled. Click load. Here we confirm the reason tags that we've used in the session. Now, if you use the session interface window, this will already be set up, 
but if you didn't, uh, and if you just created the clips directly within Pro Tools, you would just need to confirm that these reasons are all set up as required. We would click OK, and here our data is loaded into EDQ, ready for export. Now a quick way to load the data from the department note tracks is to click this Reload Session button, or just press Apple R. Then this window is displayed, and we can select Department Notes. Uh, you can also press A or D on the keyboard to make that selection. And here our Department Notes are loaded, ready for export. Now I'll load up the Pro Tool session, the same data, but it's been exported using Feed and Frames. Here we'll get the same window. We'll just click Load to load the ADRQ tracks. And now this additional window is displayed because the session contains footages. And when the session contains the clips for more than one reel, you can select if you want to load all reels in the one go, or you can select a particular reel that you want to load. Now if, say, you would load the cues just for this fourth reel, it'll reset the footage count to zero for that reel. The only other thing you need to do is confirm the timecode that relates to the zero footage that was used while exporting the text file from Pro Tools. So here we'll just load all reels and click load, confirm the reasons, and our data is ready to export. Next, I'm going to show you how to import the embedded data contained within a EDQ PDF. Now, say you've received this PDF from someone else, uh, but the queue numbers don't count the way you like or they don't contain the information that you require. You can just drop this onto EDQ and re-export the PDF and change the way that the queue numbers are generated. So to load the data from this PDF, we just simply drag and drop it onto EDQ and here it states that all the uh, ADRQ numbers are unique and you're ready to export. And if so, you did want to change the queue numbers, you can then switch this from using the queue numbers from the imported data to generating your own and set that up as you require. So just coming back to the ADRQ PDFs here, these PDFs can contain the ADRQ data for all characters that were exported at the time of export or just the cues for a specific character. So the all PDFs, like this one shown here, or time order PDFs, or the ADR summary PDFs, contain the cues for all characters in that particular export run, but any PDFs for a particular character will only contain the cues for that character. Now over here, we've got a set of ADRQ PDFs generated by ADQ, and each PDF here contains the cues for a particular reel. So these would have been generated from a Pro Tools session where each session was a particular reel. And say now you want to create a summary that contains the details of all of these reels, so you can see how much record time you need for each actor for the whole film. Then what you can do is load all of these PDFs onto EDQ. You do that by loading the first PDF, by drag and dropping it, just like before. And then you can drag and drop the second PDF and select Append. Now you do this for all of these PDFs. And we can actually flip over to the General Settings tab and then you can see where the last reel was loaded. We'll just drop on 5, Append. And here we can see we have got time codes from one hour to five over five hours. We can also click the details to check we've got all five reels loaded here. And this is how you would load up all the queues to generate a summary of all five reels. Now the last type of EDQ PDF that I'm going to show you how to load are ones with editable fields. This is the default uh, to be written PDF layout. And this contains these editable fields shown here. When I open it up in preview, if you hover over the fields, it'll show you which ones are editable. So I've updated the text in these first five cues here. And if I close that and drop it onto EDQ, EDQ automatically sees that the PDF was generated by EDQ and it contains editable fields that have changed. Now you can load the data from line and note fields that have been set up to be editable. And this window selection here allows you to set up whether you want to load just the cues that have been changed within those editable fields, or you can load all the embedded data and update the fields that have been edited, 
or you can load just the embedded data and ignore the edited fields here. But for this demonstration here, we're just going to load just the cues that have changed in those edited fields. So here we can see we've got these five cues that are loaded in from those edited fields from within the PDF. And now you're ready to export an AF to update your master queue session. Next, I'll open this Excel file here. And the first window Eddie queues displays is this Align Fields window. This is also shown when you drop on a delimited file, which I'll show you shortly. Now, this window here is used to align the columns or the data fields with the destination fields within EDQ. Now, by default, EDQ will auto align these fields, and it will do that by either using the header fields in the first line or row, or if they aren't present, it'll actually look within the column data and do its best to align the destination fields as required. These buttons here allow you to reset or clear all the selections. If you loaded this file before, the prefs button here would be enabled so that you can call up the same selection you used last time. But here we'll just select auto and auto aligns as we need. Now, if you need to change the assignments of these destination fields, you can just drag and pull the required fields to the point where you need it. Uh, and then select this transfer button basically for all the fields that need to be transferred. The other things that you set up on this window are the field transfer settings here, which I'll show you shortly, uh, and the timecode format and whether or not you're going to ignore the first line when it contains the field names. So here we'll just click import, select the production that we're going to use, and our data is loaded ready for export. A couple of other things I'm going to show you on this window. Now, because our data didn't have any actor names, you would have to set that up manually here. And because our imported data didn't contain any segment information, we need to set that up because this contains five reels. Now we can create these manually, or we can just click the split at hours button here, and EDQ will automatically create a new segment on the hour for a duration of two minutes. And we can then just update the picture version here. The next file I'm going to show you how to load is a tab delimited text file. Now this file here contains tab characters, which are actually hidden when you show them here in text edit. So I'm just going to open them up here in BB edit. This is a handy app to use if you're using a lot of text files. I'll just view the invisible characters here. And now you can see there's this little triangle character here which shows you where the tab characters are. And what this tab characters is used for is to tell EDQ where the text separates between each field. Now, if you're exporting from Excel, it's best to load an Excel file directly into EDQ. This not only avoids the problem of these tab characters being placed in the wrong point. Now, this can happen if, say, you've got carriage returns within a cell, and then this formatting will get broken. Uh, but it also avoids problems that you can have with setting text encodings for text files. Now I'm just going to close that and load the file into EDQ. Now we just have to confirm the text encoding setting that was used while exporting this file from whichever app it came from. And the delimiter character here is set by default and you shouldn't have need to actually change that. Click load and now the same align fields window is displayed. All this is set up correctly, so we'll just click import. Select the production, and our data is loaded the same way as it was from our Excel file. Now I'm just going to show you this text file here. It's also tab limited, but now this one only contains the Q start, line, and note fields. Let's drop that onto EDQ, and again we confirm the text encoding that was used. Click load, and here EDQ has automatically assigned these destination fields to the correct source fields. Now, because this data file doesn't contain the character name, uh, this field is shown here in blue saying that the field transfer settings are going to be used. Because EDQ needs to assign a character name, that will be assigned to this one here. So I can actually set this to Gloria. If your data file didn't contain a line field, it'll be set to this default here and you can also set up default start time if your data file doesn't contain that. 
Last thing you can set on this window is to remove double quotes by default if they are found at the start and end of the fields. Click OK and click Import. Select Accidents Happen. And here we can see all this data has been loaded. Because we didn't have a queue end time, this is set to the same as the start. And we're ready to export this data. So here I'm going to load the ADR queues that were exported from Media Composer. Now these can be generated in Media Composer using markers and they can be handy if uh, you need to create queues within Media Composer during a picture edit. Now Media Composer can store markers on different tracks and they can be assigned at different colors. So because the picture editor would probably want to use markers for other things apart from ADR queues, you can set up the ADR queue markers to be used on a particular track or to be assigned a particular color. So you can use these selections here to pick up just the markers that contain ADR queues. We click import, select the production. Uh, we have to confirm the reason tags because these are also used when queuing within Media Composer. And we click OK. Now the last file type that I'm going to show you how to load is a XML file that has been exported from ADR Studio. All we need to do with these is select the frame rate, click OK, and we're ready to export these queues. So this completes the video showing you how to load queue data into EDIQ. If you need further clarification on anything shown here, please check out the EDIQ user guide, which can be saved from the help menu. See the next videos for a demonstration on how the EDIQ settings can customize your queue data and how to export PDO scripts and additional files that it can generate. Thanks for watching this video. Now, if you'd like to try out EDIQ for yourself, either on Mac OS or Windows, just head to the download page of the website. Once the app is installed, just click Try to activate a trial license.